Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be taking a look at one of the more unique devil fruits ever showcased within the series, the Yomi Yomi no Mi. The Yomi Yomi no Mi is a funky paramecia type that enhances the user's soul to the point where they become able to resurrect themselves after death, as well as a bunch of other soul related abilities. This fruit was consumed by Mr. Yoho himself, Soul King Brook, and first made known to us during the Thriller Bark arc. The Yomi Yomi no Mi derives its name from a couple of different sources, the first of which being the Japanese word Yomi Gairu, meaning resurrection. However, the word Yomi can also be read on its own, and it is the name of the Japanese underworld, which the powers of this fruit go on to reference. As for the wonderful world of English, both Viz and Funimation have elected to translate this quirky object as the Revive Revive Fruit. Now, right at the outset, the Yomi Yomi no Mi can appear to be quite a simple little thing. You consume the fruit and you get a second chance at life. That's it, yeah? Well, it's slightly more complicated than that. The key thing to bear in mind with this devil fruit is that it enhances the user's soul rather than their body. So when the user of the Yomi Yomi no Mi tragically passes away, they gain agency of their own soul, allowing them to maneuver it back into the world of the living and in theory, back into their former body. Although I will say that it's quite vague in regards to whether or not the user of the Yomi Yomi no Mi has to re-enter their own body, or if they could potentially find another lifeless body or even object to inhabit instead. Regardless, once the soul has returned to its vessel, a full resurrection occurs and the user finds themselves with a second chance at life. Now this may not necessarily be a full life, however, as the condition of the body may be a factor here. For example, if the user simply died of old age, then returning to their aged body might not yield the best possible results as it continues to wither and once again results in the death of its occupant. However, I can't really say that that would be the case with any certainty whatsoever, because in the series the Yomi Yomi no Mi was used to return a soul to a body which had well and truly withered away, with only bones and a single very deeply rooted afro remaining. But the return of the soul into these old bones has made them livable once more, despite the fact that Brooke has none of the bodily elements that are really required to support life, like, you know, internal organs. So with that in mind, perhaps a user who happened to pass away of old age would find their body aesthetically similar, but with a renewed sense of vigor, thanks to the incredible properties of this devil fruit. Now, something else I should point out before we go any further is despite the soul enhancement of the Yomi Yomi no Mi, its user will only get one second chance at life. Upon passing away a second time, that's that. And assumedly the fruit would reincarnate back into the world. This is despite the fact that the fruit seems to grant a sort of immortality upon the user, specifically in Brook's case, whereby he does not need to eat, drink, or even breathe to survive, nor does he need to worry about any form of fleshy bodily failure. And thus it becomes quite difficult to imagine what could actually kill the user. I mean, perhaps some sort of long-term bone erosion. But for a bit more on this subject matter, let's talk about the Soul King himself and how he makes use of the Yomi Yomi no Mi. And I suppose it should first of all be noted that while accidentally, Brook may very well have discovered the optimal use of the fruit by resurrecting within a bare bones version of himself. As a result, as stated before, Brook is now no longer a slave to the basic functions of human life. But furthermore, he has become accepted exceptionally light and is able to perform seemingly superhuman feats like jumping incredibly high or even scuttling on water, which is very relevant in the world of Devil Fruits, as despite the fact that Brook can no longer swim, he can now essentially walk on water. Although it should be said that after an extended period of time, this will still weaken him and potentially result in him sinking. But over time, Brook's primary advancement with the fruit comes in the form of his soul powers. Very handily, Brook is able to separate his soul from his body at will, sort of like astral projection, which allows him to float anywhere he wants regardless of any physical obstructions. It should also be noted that he uh, apparently he discovered this ability through his intense desire to peek on women changing. Got to get them panties, eh? That isn't the full extent of it though, as these soul powers can be used to reattach parts of Brook's body that fall off, or even offensively, with Brook shown to be capable of channeling his soul energy into objects like his sword cane, resulting in an icy phenomena that Brook refers to as the chills of the underworld. And finally, Brook can also perform a whole host of comedic abilities as a result of his specific situation, such as opening up his skull in order to store objects, a utility that I'm sure we all wish we had. Now as for the old awakening, this is quite possibly the most unique fruit we've ever discussed within the Paramecia class, which makes speculation very, very difficult, but we're going to do it nonetheless. Although first up, I'd like to note the possibility that Brook has already awakened his devil fruit and that the base power of the Yomi Yomi no Mi may quite simply be the resurrection and it could take the awakening of the fruit to access all of Brook's other crazy soul powers. However, if the fruit has not been awakened yet, then other possibilities include the chance of enhancing the souls of others. I say this because awakened Paramecias tend to allow control of their surroundings, but that doesn't work too well with with the whole soul thing, so why not expand your control to the souls of others? Either by enhancing them in the same way that the user would be able to enhance their own, or by attacking their souls directly should they be an opponent. And we've seen at least one fruit in the series that does allow manipulation of the souls of others, so I don't feel like that's too out of the question at all. Although perhaps awakening the Yomi Yomi no Mi just makes you some sort of super soul and may even grant you a third life. 
Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a resurrecting human. I can't believe I haven't brought it up before now, but this fruit does come with one major disadvantage, in that immediately after consuming it, the user gains no benefit whatsoever. In fact, all it does is negatively impact them by removing their ability to swim. So it gives you a pretty big handicap to live the rest of your life with, at least when you're part of the One Piece world, which is primarily dominated by water. Furthermore, there is one particularly horrible situation in which the user dies of some form of drowning. In this case, the user would assumedly be unable to return to their own body, and even if they did, they'd just be stuck at the bottom bottom of wherever they drowned. So whatever you do, make sure you die on some solid ground. Also, oddly enough, the Yomi Yomi no Mi does wield a natural advantage over one of the most feared devil fruits in the world, being the Soru Soru no Mi, or more specifically, the beings created by its power. This is because the user of the Yomi Yomi no Mi is able to exert their influence over weaker souls, quite similar to how Conqueror's Haki works on regular folks. So in the end, I find it very difficult not to recommend this fruit. Even if you discount all of the crazy soul stuff, a second life, unless you're really sick of this world, and I personally don't see how you could be sick of living in the one Piece world is fantastic. It may not provide you with the raw power or incredible utility of most devil fruits, but it almost certainly means that you will be outliving most other devil fruit users. And once you're engaged in your second coming, then the fruit just gets even better as its true powers begin to shine. And with that, we are going to commit the Yomi Yomi no Mi to the devil fruit encyclopedia. Next week, things are getting even spookier as we have the pleasure of examining another incredible power in the form of the Horo Horo no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Yomi Yomi no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. So here's a fun fact. Whenever I'm designing a devil fruit that has not yet been revealed in the series, I often model them after something to do with the user. So for example, the Yomi Yomi no Mi is pretty much a direct outline of Brook's head. Although I originally wanted to use this picture of Brook as the basis for the fruit, but it, uh, it uh, ended up looking too much like a dick. And this happens much more often than I'd like to admit.